Hey, Josh. I'm just curious, from, from these multi-game series you guys are playing in, how, how much do you notice kind of the intensity going up on the ice and, and kind of the temperature rising in games? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just playing back-to-back -back like this and two-game series or even three-game series, there's a lot of, uh, you know, bad blood boils over and you don't you don't get those 10, 11 games in between like you used to. You're playing back-to-back. -back. So, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, there's a lot of battles out there and, you know, you just got to keep pushing forward. Eric Van Dees, Post Media. Uh, I just want to ask you about your hand. I know you took a puck off the hand the other day in Ottawa. I just want to ask you how, how your hand is doing and uh, if there's any real damage to it. Oh, I still got both of them, so we're still good. I uh, also want to ask you about your role here. It, it looks like you have the confidence of the coach to put you anywhere in the lineup and, and you're getting the job done. How, how, how pleased is that for you to, to know that you have that confidence where you can move up and down the lineup? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you just go out, do what you're asked, um, you know, you, you give it your all shift to shift, uh, coach is going to reward you. And, you know, I've been put in some situations um, that's helped me be successful. And whether it's, you know, it's first line or fourth line or anywhere in between or on the penalty kill, you know, I just got to continue to play the way that I play and, you know, bring the intensity. And uh, I think that's helped me a lot so far this year. Rob Kikowski, Post Media. Josh, I'm just wondering, what's the difference between the team that got out of the gate three and six and where you guys are right now? I think we've just, uh, you know, gelled as a team um, over these last couple of weeks. Uh, no preseason games didn't really help us, but I think the fact that, you know, we're sticking to our systems, we're playing our game, we're not trying to be too fancy, we're not trying to do too much. Uh, you know, we're just playing simple hockey right now, and I think that's really helping us. The last five or six games, just the impact, that, what, what sort of impact has it had just on the group? Yeah, I think uh, when you're playing well and you're winning games, it's a big mental boost. And uh, for us to uh, be successful these last five, six games, um, it's just putting us in a better position going forward. Jack Michaels, 630 Tread. Josh, uh, just the thought on the, the back to back games. You know, in your time with the Oilers the last two years, the team is 10 and 1 on the second of a back to back. Is that just a coincidence, or do you think there's a trait or two characteristic of this club that allows it to have success when theoretically you should be a little gassed? Uh, you know, I think uh, everybody in the team's in good enough shape that, you know, back to backs, uh, you know, you got enough energy. But I think just the fact that uh, the way we play and the wearing down of teams that we do on back to back games, especially uh, this year playing back to back against the same team, but. I mean, when you got guys like Connor and Leon that can uh, play 30, 40 minutes a night and turn around and play 30, 40 minutes the next night, I mean, you, you're, you got you know, good things on your side. So I think it's just the way we play and how we can wear teams down. Speaking of Connor and Leon, when you get on the ice in Montreal, are you going to show them how to bury an empty netter? <laughs> hey, I've missed my uh, fair share of empty netters too, so I, I can't say too much. You own LaFrasois, LaFrasois? Hi, Josh. Uh, we were uh, talking about uh, secondary scoring with, with Dave Tippett earlier. Um, I was curious to know for, for your part, as a guy, as a guy who played sometimes a, a bit deeper in the lineup, how, how do you how do you see that that, that pressure of, of providing secondary scoring? If you if you compare the situation there in Edmonton with, with Connor and Leon, uh, compared with, with when you played, let's say in Arizona, where maybe the, the production was a bit more balanced. Yeah, I think secondary scoring is uh, obviously really important. Uh, when you guys got guys like Connor and Leon, um, you know, they do a lot of the workload. They take a lot of the uh, the uh, workload for uh, us bottom six players and make it a little easier for us. But at the same time, you know, we got to make it easy on them too. Um, you know, they can't get three or four points a night. I know everybody hopes and wishes that they can, but at the same time, you know, the bottom six, uh, we got to step up and uh, provide for the team and help out too. So, you know, just be over these last few games to be able to do that, uh, I think it gives everybody on the team a boost, but especially the bottom six that, uh, you know, we're, we're capable of scoring too, and uh, we can help out in any way. Last question, Jim Matheson, Post Media. Uh, Josh, this is a little off the wall, but you keep talking about the teams playing one another back to back. You're seeing the same referees all the time now. Are you one of those people that say, "Didn't I just see you last night?" Or, am I, or are you, do you, are you cognizant of who's refereeing the games? Because it seems like it, 
the keeping the Canadian foreign refs just doing the North Division games and you see the same guys over and over and over again? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of the same thing with the teams, you know. Uh, we look across and see who we're playing, you know, whether uh, they liked us the night before and if we're going to get a call or if, uh, you know, we were yelling at them a little too much and they're going to call uh, soft penalties on us. So we got to be cognitive, cognitive of that. But at the same time, yeah, you're obviously, obviously aware of uh, the refs and who's out there. So um, in those back-to-back -back games, I think it's pretty crucial. You know, you don't want to be too loud and too upfront with them on the first game. But, you know, if you get them in the second and they don't, you don't like a call, I guess you can kind of let them know a little bit. But, you know, you got to be smart because we're going to have them all year long. So. And one other question about your ability to play left side or, or right wing. Have you always been able to do that, or or did you just, as your NHL career went on, it was like one of those ones, like if I can play both sides, I'm going to be playing a lot more because I can play left wing and right wing. Yeah, I think just as uh, as I was coming up, um, you know, it's it's not often you find a lot of righties on a team, but when you get in that situation and you want to continue to be in the lineup and you get uh, put on the left side, you got to be able to, uh, you know, play it and play it well. And I think that's just something that I've took over time is, uh, you know, learning to play both sides and, um, you know, just being able to play wherever the coach puts me.